Okay. So we have the meeting on the open source GIS and site planning workshop. So Stefano, maybe you can fill us in where we're at. Yeah, we have a preliminary program that is uh, quite advanced, I think. Uh -huh. um, I I needed to read it through again with Giuseppe to double check that everything okay. we have uh, planned is feasible. Okay. Some of the topics are quite advanced and um, the problem or the difficulties here will be to deliver uh, an easy format for mm -hmm. physical data processing. Yeah. So we have, uh, I believe, we are in the state where uh, we are uh, at the moment where we need to check how to make it uh, feasible so to write an open call and see if there is enough people um, uh, interested into the training yeah uh, we need to, to join uh, this uh, training and then the, uh, this could, could happen yeah uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so so I think the, the main next big step is to do the announcement get the clarity on the curriculum and the learning outcomes and uh, start advertising that so we can gauge the interest and of course there will be a, a checkpoint like if, if nobody signs up we might have to cancel but I mean basically for going forward I mean we'll know pretty quickly uh, how the response is um, yep so do you have a copy of the the latest uh, curriculum that we're considering can you uh, uh, link that that's I, the... I haven't touch it since Find it. Let's see. Um, the, uh, okay. Oh, you you send me also a um, a link to the public lab, and I haven't seen the the YouTube. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm aware of the activity of the public lab, yeah. and uh, I know that they have this system of uh, basically taking pictures and uh, uploading them, but the, um, the open drone map is um, a quite advanced algorithm behind, because basically it reconstructs uh, an, um, a, dig a digital terrain model from the images, so it's a much more advanced data yeah. processing that is able to yep. basically take the picture on different angle and then yep. reconstruct the so shape of yeah. do we have any new information so is that person going to be able to make it by any chance or, or no no okay. uh, i think cristiano for this uh, course he won't uh, he won't be able to make it okay um because at best he will be in uh, in santa barbara with giuseppe okay uh, unfortunately, yes, we have this uh, both uh, um, workshop going on at the same time. Yeah. And, and um, we have seen that it's quite difficult to uh, to adjust to make it either earlier or earlier is more difficult for for yeah for both of us because you have uh, this other workshop and later. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, uh, what do we want to, uh, yeah. you know, to in order to get ready to post the event? So, uh, what do we need to to get there? Do we want to go go over the last time through the schedule, or should we? Uh, should I start drawing up the announcement because that would clarify? I would make very specific bullet points for, for here are the learning outcomes and here's the schedule, uh, and then we can pretty much verify that for the last time that we're all okay with that and. 
go from there or how would you suggest going forward? Yeah, that could be a good idea because, mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we, in the announcement we can just draw a, ver a synthetic description of the training with four mm -hmm. or five bullet points yeah. or something like this. Yeah. And then we could provide a link to the extended uh, uh, agenda. Yeah, that would be good. And then just a few graphics, like uh, what are some of the graphics we want to put in? I, I want to definitely put some graphics about our place and then some graphics about the, the GIS work. Um, but maybe if you can help me select a graphic or two that we can put, put on an announcement, maybe I can ask you that. Uh, are you going to be available... Or, you know, like today, tomorrow, just once I draft this up, I mean, so we can review that back and just go back and forth quickly. You'll have a time uh, to review that? Yeah, a bit too, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm quite, yeah, um, I have um, a lot of things going on during these mm -hmm. days, but yes, it could be, uh, yeah, we can interact. Okay. Um, the other thing that I was thinking, and yeah. I think it's, um, I was uh, wondering and want to ask you. Uh -huh. um, if I come, I, I think it would be very useful for uh -huh. me to come a few days before okay. and walk with you uh, a little okay. bit. Uh, maybe like coming two days before and okay. a couple of days. I know that you have this other workshop. Yeah. Sort of. yeah. So, but, but if I can say, you know, show you what is going to be the lectures and so already show you a bit and then prepare maybe if I need to refine and do some more preparation, uh, th that would be good. I think. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, that would be good. I mean, the workshop is going to be going on pretty much like from 9 to 5 in a day. Would it suffice to do it after hours? So I can... Yeah, that could be. Uh, if uh -huh. you're not too tired and you can, I can grab you a couple of hours, uh, yeah. five to seven or something like this and show you, well, listen, this is my idea for that's how I'm going to do and that's, uh, so I can already show you a little bit of software and, and mm -hmm. stuff so you can maybe assist me uh, during the, the workshop if there is... Uh, yeah, some yeah, definitely. I'm hoping, yeah, I mean, that works and I'm hoping that, you know, I can actually start asking you questions. I mean, we can actually... How much of that can we start going over, I mean, in the immediate future, like, you know, after after we do the posting, we should, or, you know, right now, I should look at the software a little bit and, and have some well, initial... We start doing something, on, because the thing is that now uh, I'm, ne I'm, I'm, I'm getting prepared for the other training, so I'm, okay. I'm building a, a small cluster, I will show you some project, uh, um, and then we, because from the... From the 14th of June to the 21st, we have this other uh, big workshop event internationally. There is a lot of people coming from everywhere. Uh -huh. And so after the 21st of June, I will be back in Cornwall the, the week of the starting the 23rd. And at that time, I in, in reality, I need to finish some work for here. But then beginning of July, so let's say in best, mm -hmm. it's like the, the week, something like from the, the 2nd of July to the, and the week after, I will be okay. I need to, to work much more because I do need to sit down okay. and look at all the, okay. the things that would have wrote and prepare some. Uh, uh, as I was mentioning, I will try to use as much as possible. Um, online material so youtube or the lecture open slides uh, there is a lot of things that we can use but then for specific things of like hydrological modeling i need to prepare some example and especially download the data concerning your farm and do the data processing for your farm so when i will be there everything is already done i just have to show you and show the people and show how i did it but I need to prepare it before. Mm -hmm, so in mm -hmm. short, I will have much more time at the beginning of July. Okay. No, that works. But that works. Um, our first workshop is on the 10th of July. So there's definitely that that whole week before the workshops start so we can go through this more intensively. 
yeah. and iron out the details. Already, I can already send you some links and say, oh, yeah. well, if you have a half an hour here or there, you can already start looking at quantum Gs or something yeah. like that. Yeah. No, that's Maybe, that's fine. Uh, I've tried to populate already, like uh, in in our wiki page, uh, a section for landscape uh, farm and planning, something like this, and then uh, so I, I can populate it with some material. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. The only other item I was gonna propose is that I I haven't talked to people regarding the the site plan aspect. Uh, but I do want to get someone at least remotely and possibly on site that would help on when it comes to the actual site plan, the process for site planning. And I have a few yeah. names of people that can help out with that. So, um, yeah, but that's the only outstanding thing that, that I think I yeah. need to bring into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One other question. Um... Uh, with GPA because we we were planning on having like two field um, uh, experiments yeah and we wanted to have some GPS to locate plants and yep. and we'll take some data and and take yeah take some data and take yeah. some points and data points what type of GPS device and how many do we have no I mean we don't have any GPS devices right now I mean we've got cell phones but um, what what would you suggest for that? Is there something that we should buy? Well, we could ask also participants if they have one to bring it over. Giuseppe, do you have any recommendation on that? Because that's, uh, I mean, but, but nowadays, I mean, I mean, uh, unless you want to really use it intensively, use it. Uh, also, the mobile you have several functions. We we can check it out. Some app that's already available for. Mm -hmm. GPS points. Yeah, but is that is that, uh, is that accurate enough? With the, the or we need some Garmin or something that is has more. Yeah, probably Garmin is accurate, but I don't know how much you you are going to to use uh, this data just as a as a, te as a test or as a how you call it as a. Well, I they explain explain the material, or you really need this high accuracy of the uh, of the GPS data. Um, I think Marcel so, was uh, thinking of using this experiment and not the whole training for then later on use those data for uh, actually do some digging and use it. Yeah. So, so, I mean, of course, with a telephone you can learn how to do it, but to have yeah. a proper measure, uh, we need a better accuracy, like in the, in the, at least in the meter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Uh, uh, I, okay, I, I don't, I never did a comparison between the, let's say, the mobile GPS and mm. the Garmin GPS. But uh, next, in the next week, I will go in Kenya, so I will have uh, some couple of GPS, so I can really try and I will download an app okay. for, and I can try to compare the both of. Mm -hmm. uh, because they use the same satellite system, so I, I, I don't think they will be different so much so I, I will I will let you know it. yeah and eventually you could we could borrow that one from uh, Yale you think one or two or uh, not really because it's going to be because out there you yeah. need to be send it to okay. marching location so it's going to be a bit mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. looking what it is and I hear it says like a, a dominion this one is like 99 pounds uh, for the garment I mean Worst yeah, case, we can we think buy about one, buying uh, one. Yeah. Special ecology could buy one, and open source ecology could buy a couple of them, or something like this. Um, well, this yeah, is let's find out the specs that we, we need to find a solution with that. We can ask people if they have, you know, over thirty. Maybe there is a couple of groups that already have it. Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh... Starting with what exactly are the specs that we're looking for? Yeah, we can figure yeah. that out. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I know at my lab they have bought some uh, they have of Pixie and they are different low cost differential GPS. You have got like the accuracy of uh, a, a centimeter, and they are the first one low cost, but it still is on the order of uh, maybe five hundred pounds. So seven hundred dollars, or something that before was thirty thousand dollars. So it's like a 
complete uh, revolution in, in, in products, but still it's, uh, it, I think for this experiment, just a basic Garmin will do the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would say yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, this is another thing that we need to consider. Okay. So you, you want to, you wanted to edit something for the, together now, for the, kind of the open call? And how, how are we, I mean, I, I think we could do a parallel open call, both on the open source ecology and on special ecology, to try to, you know, make it, uh, uh -huh. uh, to sponsor it on any yeah. available channel we have. Right. Um. And um, Martin, which, which one will be the channel? I mean, I mean, I, I think mainly it would be people from the United States. I don't think they would come from abroad. Uh, Maybe yes. Mostly, Maybe yes, but, but we expect. You, which one is going to be your network? Right. I mean, the network is U.S. Pretty much when we had people come for workshops, it was pretty much U.S. and Canada. So that's the. I mean, we typically publish on our social media and our website just to show you, uh, like for example, where we. So th these are our current. Let's see. This is what we currently have up online. So we publish that through our social media pages and our media channels. Okay. But um, we can do something like a press release and things like that. We can we can get the publicity machine going. But yeah, the step number one is to go through the the announcement in detail. Okay, now, because we mm -hmm. we don't. I mean, usually we use. Uh, uh, main list, uh, but for this case, it's going to be a different target, so we cannot use our, let's say, our main list. Mm. Um, but yeah, some of the agriculture, be. more agriculture oriented yeah. mailing list, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, Do you? Be, yeah. I mean, um, what's the size of your mailing list? But usually we use it, usually we use a mailing list from the software distribution, from R, from Grass. Um, uh -huh. We can do it on JS yeah, uh, yeah. That one we can do it. I, I mean, the community of user is quite big. I, I don't know the, the size of it. We know that, like in our website now, we have something like uh, between nine and twenty thousand unique visitors a month. So it's uh, but it, in this in our case, it's not people from the farming sector. It's more university or. Um, Right. But, I mean, I'm sure the some of the people, they can pass it on to other people that they know in farming organizations. But it would be good to get a survey. Well, I mean, to do the marketing, the publicity, we want to do a survey of all the... I mean, we don't have a thorough, comprehensive list of all the various farming organizations. That's something we should draw up for this uh, and just in general for OSE. But, um, yeah. Let's see. Can we um, can we talk a little bit about the the various? Do we want to brainstorm on some of the publicity venues that we want to reach out to? I mean, that's that'll be worthwhile. I mean, definitely there's sustainable agriculture. Yeah. Sustainable agriculture groups like each state in the United States has some kind of a sustainable agriculture organization. Uh, so fifty. So basically, I would say contact. Let me see, let me just share this link with you so you guys can edit this. Um, maybe we can brainstorm a couple of different uh, venues where we can publicize. So open, so sustainable agriculture organizations, um, each state in the US has one. Uh, identify them and, and send them a list of these. Uh, what are some other venues? So, what are the different GIS organizations in the in the states and Canada? I mean, the mailing lists are typically international. Like, if we talk about Grass GIS or QGIS, um, are there mailing lists there that we can tap? Or yeah, yeah, for sure, Quantum Gs. I think more than Grass. Well, we can do both there. It's easy. So we we will do it. It's, it's uh, we can. Mm -hmm. Can use the Quantum GIS and the Grass community. 
mm-hmm. um, for for these. Okay. Um, if you want to go in the document, I just uh, permaculture community is more very yeah you know, it's yeah permaculture permaculture groups. Um, we should have a. What we should do is is get a comprehensive listing. Yeah, of people. Groups, U.S. and Canada. Um, the other other places that that there's a lot of interesting people people interested in this kind of work is, I mean, there's the eco villages groups that some of them are. Uh, quite connected and interested in this kind of stuff. Maybe uh, uh, so com comprehensive eco village list for U.S. and Canada. Eco village. Uh... Yeah, yeah. These are basically like intentional communities that okay. are land based. That a lot of them uh, have land use plans, and they'd probably be interested in that. Um, what are some of the other sectors that that may be interested? Um, well, is that I don't know who's uh, like uh, not people that owns the farm, but maybe people that offer services. Like I don't know who's in uh -huh. the US, maybe agronomist or technical, you know, um, technical studio um, people that actually do the job, and that, that they will maybe use this one as a service to provide to other farmers. Uh huh. So. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Is, is it? Uh, can you be more specific on who that, who yeah, those people are? Yeah, uh, because like, well, because I know in, in Italy, you basically you have these uh, people that are agronomists, and that they will, uh, you know, you, you don't know how to do this, you call them, and they will do the job for you. And it's a bit di diff different from our perspective or our approach because we would like to have the people themselves that learn how to do it. And, Yeah, it's going to be the, the, the architecture or the engineering for the house is the same. So when you have to build up a um, uh, land, so when yeah, when you have to establish uh, I don't know a grape uh, vineyard, so you call this guy that is called an agronomist and he's setting up all the, the grape and making soil uh, testing and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So this one should be in the network to contact. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I think there will be some some professionality in uh, like this one in the United States. Uh huh. There's University Agriculture Extensions and USDA. We can reach out to. Yeah, people that are coming out from that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for all the different states, yeah. Yeah, or people, or even also people connected with the um, with the binary, you know. Why not bring a lot of money, so they want to have. have yeah, maybe so usually they pay. Yeah, or usually they pay very well. These people. I don't know if you have like organization of wine yard or. Oh, Vin I see. I see these. I found online is genecovillage.org. Maybe there are several other of these. This is a can you can you paste the link? Of... Can you paste the link in the chat box? You have sent an email, a message. Yeah, I'm just uh, writing these down in this document that I okay, shared yeah. in the text box. So this ecovillage.org should be Probably similar to these, there are several. Yeah, Global Eco Village Network. Yeah, okay. Yep, I know those people. I okay. Ah, got some by the of those way, people. thanks you because uh, some uh, people from uh, a similar uh, um, uh, um, activity contacted me from Italy, and uh -huh. they were very much. They have look at my website and our website, and they were very much interested in the in what uh, Special Ecology is doing, and they want to come and meet us in Italy when we go there next mm -hmm. month. Uh, you probably
probably mention to my name to them. It's um, uh, R- Rural Hub, something like this. Okay. You you were talking with them recently? No, not recently, but they might have saw so, seen some of my... Um, I mean, I, I've published this on Facebook, and maybe they've seen okay. some of the... Okay, some I of this. check this. So, well, great. So they, and they were immediately uh, interested in doing it in, in Italy, the same. So yeah, okay, well, now great. Very good. <clears throat> yeah. So a lot of well, vi- you say a lot yeah. of vineyards get site get basically maps of their vineyards. Um, they do a lot of uh, site planning. Uh, yeah, I mean when they have to figure out uh, where to, to plant the vineyards, they, they yeah. Need to, yeah they need to to to, to make mm-hmm. the planning of how to yeah. the, the orientation of the of the uh, different row yeah. and everything, no and how much this the plants, but this one is not only for vinyl, but for all the different kind of plantation. It usually, is the is the agronomist that is taking care about this. Yeah. Uh, study agronomy, that they can be, come out with agronomy bachelor or yeah, grad mm-hmm. or undergrad. Okay. We should make uh, sure that it's clear that uh, basically, if you later want to do anything like um, uh, using sensor in your farm, a precision farming, mm-hmm. or any any of those activity later on, first you need to do what we are trying to do now. So this is kind of a preparation of your data, your basic layers that then will allow you to do some climatical modeling or some crop productivity monitoring time. So uh-huh. anything that you will do later. So even if you are interested in this Internet of Things and Put some sensors on your farm and monitor. Before that, you will need to us to, to, to do the, the, the same kind of mapping that we are doing here. Right, right. And is there any? Um... Well, maybe we can say later on we will we plan to organize other uh, trainings, but this is like the first of, of a series of workshop for uh, you know agriculture okay. B2, so kind of. Uh, yep. Uh huh. So we can position this as the first step to. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. As precision farming and or you know we, we, we should use the the best uh, uh, the key keywords that are attracting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the typical precision farming var. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I will also check. I don't know if some of you have have been checking if there are also their precision farming workshop or coming also from from maybe university level in the United States or maybe not mm. workshop but like semester co- course and in order to not overlapping or see if okay um, so I mean one can be uh, at checking the market if it's already existent or not uh-huh I don't think so because it's uh, this open source is not really spread in the United States so uh huh. We can, posi- of course, positioning this as open source precision farming. So, for yeah, example, yeah. for landscape architecture programs at universities, we can publicize to them, because yeah. anyone who's progressive are, is going to understand that open source tools are desirable. Uh, so we can probably get some friends there. What's your reception? What has your reception been with different, uh, different people? Or universities, I mean, are universities in general fav- favorable to this, all this open source work, or do they like to use closed tools? No, they are favorable, uh, or, or, but, uh, yeah, they are favorable, but they don't know. So in the beginning, in to, the, let's say, to break the, to break the knowledge is quite, is quite hard. And then when you get, when they see the powerful, they, 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 they start to use it. But in the beginning, they, it's like every time that you switch from something that you already know to something that you don't know. So it's, it's a bit hard in the beginning. But so is, for example, um, for this uh, workshop that uh, uh, I'm running in Santa Barbara mm-hmm. uh, in July, um, I get, uh, I had a bit of trouble in, um, in, uh, in the communication network because I was usually in, in Europe, we use it, the, um, the R, R and grass and clear JS mailing list. And in one week we got, um, we got uh, the, the, all the participants even more, but over here in the United States, even even when I send it to the, to the mailing list, nobody was replied. So mm-hmm. then I was um, 
searching of each university, the GIS and uh, remote sensing list, I was posting in that list and then I get a registration. So it's very important to, mm-hmm. to target in very well um, the, the network, yeah, to check very well if we are able to, to reach people. So I will check also agriculture mailing list and architecture mailing list from the university with the people that they have just finished or they are keeping doing university they want to be a bit more independent for the career and so on. So that one is quite important because mm-hmm. it's another, I mean, Europe and the United States is another network. So yeah. So, yeah. so definitely with all the different universities, GIS programs, Sorry, so, yeah, so there's three specific university areas, GIS programs, agriculture programs, landscape architecture programs. Yeah, yeah, I would say these three, yes, yes. Okay. And maybe also uh, the precision farming that is linked to the remote sensing. Yeah, that's uh-huh. agriculture or GIS. Yeah, agriculture, yeah, but just in case, yeah. But then the university can change it. Since we have done in 2012 the training in Cornwall, they now teach one week of open source quantum G's as uh, as um, um, credit for the university. So that's a very it's a great achievement for us. Basically, the university and and the the, the, the person that teach is one of our mm-hmm. um, is is uh, one of our ancient um, students so it's great mm-hmm. do you have any contacts of people in the united states who can help us identify some of these programs mm, not really not well really. we can ask again to uh, we can ask again to cristiano and his community there with drones because maybe yeah. they have some idea i can have a, an informal chat with him and see he's in west coast but i, I yeah, I mean, the, uh, and then there's... Thing, another thing is uh, agricultural farming, right? Organic farming. How yes. Organic. Yes. Organic yeah. farming. Um, yeah, I mean, we can spe- specially target organic ah. farming programs. I don't know how many of them exist. I know that a lot of universities don't really have that. Um, I actually don't know if there's any specific organic farming programs are favorable to organic farming because a lot of it is special interests from the big industry and in the end probably the best thing is to post, to post some uh, twitter or facebook post uh, with the correct keywords i guess yeah mm-hmm. yep like uh, precision farming uh, agriculture uh, precision uh, mm-hmm. landscape uh, planning and agriculture, something like this. Just maybe for a couple of weeks, try to to post something. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I find some interesting other uh, links that we could, uh, you know, uh, introduce or be into to the to the project so we can set it better. Yeah. Look at the link that I sent you here uh, in the chat box. If you could, it's the chat box of the Google Hangout. Just click the chat in the upper left. So there's um, Yeah. Who else? I mean, there's definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think there's also the open source software community that would, you know, various lists around open source software in the states. That I mean, if it's open source GIS, they they probably for- forward that kind of stuff. Well, the Quantum G's community is getting the most uh, important now. I think one of the most uh, appropriate for these. Mm-hmm. We can do that one and grass because we are going to use both uh, some functionality of grass. Yeah, yeah. Um.
I think we covered a lot of it. I mean, then there's, there's of course, um, I mean, we could do a press release on this. If we want to. Do you guys ever do press releases? Not really. No. no. We have uh, even this next uh, training we are trying. With, they are already booked. So basically, we. we mm -hmm. uh, and this is the next training. Is which one? Well, the the, the Vancouver, uh, and then well, we are starting this summer because we're going to uh, first Giuseppe is going to Africa, then we go both to Italy, South Italy, and then we have uh, Vancouver, and then Santa Barbara, and then um, of uh, it would be great to come and see you. Right, and when you got the course filled up, how did you advertise that? Yeah, to to the mailing list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. list. Yeah. yeah. And it's the mailing list is primarily it's masters and graduate. It's mailing list. So it's open source. It's, uh, what's the name? It's called uh, Grass. Uh, well, you yeah, can do that. Google it, yeah, yeah. it Grass mailing list or QGIS mailing list. Yeah, and our mailing list. We do the history. Because, but, but this is, you know, it's a bit different from what we're doing. We still can, uh, for the quantum gist, for sure we will sponsor it. And um, there is also another mailing list, Ecolog, it is called, that is quite uh, well well known in the United States, where there was a different Ecolog. Yeah. Okay. Ecolog okay. International. Ecolog, maybe I can send you an email, uh, info about this. And uh, you get several posts in the ecology environment. I don't know how much will be ecological agriculture, let's say, how many people would be in that in that list, but mm. better to use it, yeah. Because it's well known in the United States. Actually, I got several ones from that list. Okay, find it, I think, Ecolog. Yeah, Ecolog, uh, I think is... Can you send the link there? Underscore R L. Uh, let's see, is that one uh, Canada's source for environmental health and safety? Ecolog sure International? Ecolog.com? That one, that, well, if you find it. Yeah, the, the University of Maryland. Yeah. I'm sending. Yeah, this one. Okay. So I don't know how much agriculture, but is is quite eco. Actually, I have a bunch of. I'm registered, so I can scroll inside. Okay. Well, let's share these. Um, can you paste the link? And then we we can uh, think through and add something before. Do you have a link to that one? That to, to have an, an out, out there before the end of the week, or like to be working on another couple of days, and maybe Friday or yeah. next weekend to have it out would be good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Can you send a link to that through the chat box? I did, I did in the in the chat. Okay, I will send also. Um, where is the chat? Uh, the chat box. Oh, in the chat of the document? In the chat of Gmail. Well, okay, now it's in both. Okay, there. Ecolog. Uh huh. And that's a list served for who? For people in the ecological field. So, it would be. Okay. Something for agriculture it will be also. It will be something similar, let's say, from university or. What's Lsoft? Is that a newsletter software or email software? Is that open source or? You guys know that? The one from Ecolog, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, written and soft. Uh, uh, I don't know. Usually they use these mail men. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's one actually I never saw that kind of. 
Okay, so that's a good list. Ecological Community of America. Of the world. That's global list or I don't know, I never heard about it. Usually they use this mailman. Mm-hmm. That is uh, that one is open source for mailman public culture. So is Grass GIS an official project of the Os Geo Group project? Or? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, for sure we could also um, go to the Fos Four uh, G. Not sure they have any. Yeah, yeah they, they have the announcement and the news. Actually, I should uh, we should put also ours over there. Fos Four G is a block problem. spot. They have a block spot for Fos Four Four G. Yeah. Uh, that's code of UK. Maybe they have a com that is American. Introduction to quantum G's, they charge four thousand five hundred. What's R? Uh, can you paste some of the links you guys are finding? I got the. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, well, well, this is not. I mean, it's uh, just another other people that does. I just uh, went through now. It's other people that do quantum GIS training. It's called Fos G Academy. They charge you a lot of money. I mean, the way we should position this, I mean, the unique feature about what we're doing here is that that's the first ever course specifically for farmers and for doing yeah. land use plans using open source G, open source GIS. Yeah. So, I mean, we should yeah. emphasize that. I, I think we should be able to fill this up pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, the, the, I, our hope is that we can produce several other and maybe yeah. raise a little bit of grants to build up then a, a proper quantum GIS plugin or something more, uh, you know, user friendly. To, that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, let's start. Let's start with this, and uh, let's see. I think now we already have uh, quite uh, um, some some uh, links. We mm -hmm. can think through. Uh, during these couple of days more and eventually add some more. Okay. Um, you want to write a, a little, a short description of the G's, of the training or something like this, to, and then we can review it. Okay. Um, uh, you want to do that now or should we say, should, should I, uh, do you want to start? If you edit, because, um, uh, we should have, you know, a couple of just a, a couple of paragraph for, and then a link to the. So it's just in a couple of paragraph. If, if you want to edit it, then I can add it more. Yeah. Then do you want to start that right now, or should we hang up and and do that, and I can send that to you? If you send it to me, so it, it's it's okay. Yeah. 
Or, yeah. I mean, I don't have it here. The, the other page we were working Do you, with. Right. What's the closest you have for a description? I mean, the descriptions you have are pretty much much more technical, geared at the university grad students. Yeah. So, is there anything we can use? Simplify, it should be... Um, what was the, the title we gave it to? Because it was already very technical. It should be the first title that it's... You want to have the word permaculture or a, a farm... Well, I was I would say so. Farm this planting. Yes, I, I would call it site design. design. Site I mean, design. open source GIS and site site design workshop. Um, okay, but uh, open source. Um, yeah. Open, yeah. I mean, I would put a site uh, or something with a farm farm. Um, the word farm, I will use it because site can be a site farm can be even a design. Yeah. Well, how do you feel open about farm source, design? Open source farm design. Yeah, I would say we use the word farm, farm site mm -hmm. because site is too generic. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Um, open source farm design uh, uh, because if we put GIS, maybe not many people know what that is. Yeah, can be, yeah. You, I mean, you can, uh, open okay. source farm design. Open source farm design and workshop planning. with... Farm design and planning, I would say. And planning. Yeah. So, basically, difference between a design. Yeah. Um, and then between brackets, maybe you... Yep. And then, uh, as a second, like, a second word, a farming, second... Farming, yeah. Yep. Could be using geographic information system and uh, the most updated technology for GIS and state of art technologies. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah. Using geographic information or access access uh, geographic information system and uh, So farm design and sustainable planning. Okay. The word sustainable is good. I mean, the other way you could go also beyond sustainable is regenerative. Because mm -hmm. we actually so talk a lot regenerative about regenerative agriculture. Well. Sorry guys, I have, I have another meeting going on. Okay. Okay. Five minutes. okay. I'll give you an update after this. Okay. okay. And then, uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks Giuseppe. Later, later on, I can. Okay. Thanks for hooking me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Giuseppe. Bye much. Take bye care. Bye. Again, mm -hmm. I also have a um, meeting in a little while. Okay. But that, um, that could be already open source farm design and sustainable planning or uh, farm design and planning sustainability, something like this. And then how about, second, like a, yeah? How about open source farm design and regenerative planning workshop? Does people and know that? I mean, there's, yeah, that's like, it's not only sustainable, it makes things better. That's, that's the word for regenerative agriculture. I mean, there's a community. There's a community in the United States, there's um, a few of the leading permaculture guys talk a lot about regenerative design. Okay. So, maybe that's, I think that can capture... Yeah, open I think source it's... farm design and planning regenerative agriculture. Or without planning. Open source farm design and regenerative agriculture. And then you need a, a second, more longer statement saying... Using uh, GIS, uh, using open source GIS. Yeah, maybe the first you, time you use it, you can make it... Uh,
cryptographic information system and then in brackets GIS so people will, you know. Okay, GIS. Um, what if we were to, because I know, I know a guy who has a drone who takes, who takes pictures, is the concept of aerial stitching difficult? I mean, even if it's not for analysis of topography, but just for pictures, just for us st stitching of maps. Well, you can, yeah, you can do that. Uh, you can, yeah, it's, uh, it's for sure it's easier to to just have a, an image and stitch together and georeference that image. I think we gotta include that because I think I need to reach out to that guy because uh, I think that's very exciting for a lot of people. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But it's so charged this uh, this event of things that basically, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it is something that you can, you know, you can do the flight your drone and do it, and it would be nice. But my point here is that with the with the resolution we are working on now. You can just easily just grab the, um, uh, the aerial photography available online from uh, from Google or uh, yeah. big, uh, aerial mapping and georeference that one. You can, but one, I mean, it doesn't have as much detail and it's not recent. I mean, it's relatively yeah. recent, but it's yeah. last year, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. So should we, I mean, should uh, we... That we will make another, we, we need to, uh, you can fit that one, that will take another half a day or, uh, you know, uh, half a morning. I don't know how long time it will take to go up there, depending on the size of your uh, uh, farm. But I'll, I'll be happy to do that and then we can say in, in the next training we can try to use more advanced technique to build that. A topographical model out of a, a drone flight. Um, yeah, yes, I... we can, we can, you can use it. So basically, uh, you can. We will move some of the activity I was planning and leave a space for that one. If you. Yeah, I would say like two hours. I mean, we go out there like one hour. I mean, one hour flyover, right? You know, like we go out there, we get the drone out. We, you said how, how many hectares is your farm? It's like 10? Yeah, 15, one five. 15 hectares? Yeah. Well, that, that would take a while huh, to, to map 15 hectares. Um, yeah. Uh, I know also these guys from the balloon, uh, the, the public land, they do this balloon mapping. That is also, I, I think, a, a, an extraordinary idea. Um. I, I that would take longer, wouldn't it? I have done with other people, so just doing all by my own and having all these other things to do, I, I would not take the responsibility to include all of that. Because then it gets too much just for me. But right. It's... Have other, other people that are. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. If we can. Okay. What I will do is I'm going to reach out to this uh, person and see if we can. If I can get you. So if it, if you don't have to do the the actual picture capture, is there functionality within GIS where you can easily put in the aerial photographs, or you have to do a lot of processing before that? So the trick is all the processing that goes before you put it into well, GIS. Basically, you 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 need to overlay your image that you have uh, from your camera. To a GIS layer with some reference point so you have to check you have a screen that is divided in two and you you check some reference point of your image and some reference points on on the GIS with geo coordinates uh -huh. and uh, you might want to a 15 hectares have a kind of a 20 30 points something like this and then you there is an algorithm that will basically reproject the image that you have taken with your drone to the to the geographic information system, so you will uh, reshape 
shape the image to uh, the projection you're using. How many points of reference do you need? Uh, like three points, or? Well, more uh, they need to be well spread. So you need to have cover like the, the the boundary of your farm, so some external point, and some you know uh, also kind of spread uh, uh, homogeneously would be better. If you have a uh, 10, 20 would be perfect. Reference point, it means that uh, you take a picture and you have, for instance, the, the corner of your house or, you know, the fence of your outer boundary of your property. And then you go to see in, in the data that you have uh, on the GIS where the corner of your house and where this other fence point is. And you, you basically, you, you you click this uh, equivalence uh, uh, points mm -hmm. and then the, the system with these 10 20 points will, will do the job what if you have just a single picture just to show an example because i think a single picture overlay yeah, yeah yeah for one single picture you need all these points you need about 20 you points know? for a single single picture yeah, maybe, but they maybe you check the picture and you, 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 you will find, I don't know, you have a tree that you, you find it on, you know, you have, you need to, if you have 20, it's perfect. If not, you can, you can do it with three, with four, but then it will be not so, I mean, you're, you're trying to use an image uh, with the drone to have it a very precise location of things. But yeah. then if that image is, is not georeferenced correctly, it means that you, you will see something, but it's not in the right place. Oh, because you actually have to look at, it examines the angles? Yeah. Oh. The, the image you're taking, when you reference it, basically, it will distort the image I see. to, to uh, fit it into your reference, geographic reference system. Mm -hmm. So, let me ask you this. If we have, um, and the referencing you do through what? Through the Garmin or whatever GPS locator? Or no? no you... it's, it's, okay, it's like that. You, you go, you launch your drone, you take a 100 picture, and then you have a, an easy software that stick all the picture together. That's open Maybe source? You... Huh? That's open source? That, I, I, we need to check what it is, but yeah, I am not familiar with that specific thing because I'm not a drone uh, expert, okay. but uh, I, I, I'll ask some friend, this probably is the open drone mapping, the open drone site we will find, uh, uh, I, I, I checked this one. Do you know the person, the, the, the guy from the open drone mapping? Because I'm thinking, I'm not even thinking the whole farm. I'm just saying, for example, to give you a good use case, yeah. we have our house with a very close planting of a lot of different perennial tree crops. And we would just like to get a, a detailed picture of the house with, where we can map out the plants very carefully, just in that little section. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't require, like, because that would be a very useful thing, like, for us right now. We can document the actual plant out using GIS but we don't need to do a lot of the other side because first there's not a lot going on on the other parts of the site you know so so as a, as a use case you know as a, a simple exercise maybe we could do just like one picture and yeah. put it into the GIS I mean if not you can do you know you can stitch a lot of image one to the other and then you georeference it, and then I we, I do have one teaser, like a geographic layer. I have software that can uh, stitch it together. But if you first do the matching together, and then you just do the georeferencing of one huge image, it's uh, probably it's um, easier. You need you need less points. Right. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Um. I will try to find an expert in this so we can put this since we're overloading you and you might not, you know, it's yeah, already too much the other for you. Thing that you can do, you, you have some, some reference uh, things, like you put some, some uh, things that you can see and you go with the GPS and yeah. you look where exactly those points are. 
then yeah. you upload this into your GIS, and then when you take the image, then you will know that you have 20 of these things, and I, I mean, one, to four of them can be the four corners of your house. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then you, you take the four corners of the very outer points of your fence. Yeah. So that's already will make a, a lot because if you have these, you know, like five points, in four corners and the center of the image, mm -hmm. that's already will help a lot because they are very well. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's see. I, I, I am I am very positive on this, but I the, what, what I'm saying that um, we will need somebody that already has done this. He knows the drone, he knows the uh, camera, and because if I go on top of it, I have to, to find okay. out all this. Okay, so we want, we want somebody that knows the drone, knows the camera, knows the, and then knows QGIS? Well, that one I can do. I mean, if he does, if he does the, the flight and he give me the, 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 the image as we want it, then I can do the job of uh, job re re uh, locating and okay include into the cheese but I, I don't want to be there and then stuck oh, well this drone is not flying i don't know how to draw a flight oh yeah no i mean that's very simple that's uh, we've got a guy that came here already in fact we actually do have some pictures already but but to make it exciting for people i mean if they see the drone flying and get a picture that would be you know yeah. just great doesn't well, cost a lot great. of effort if you can do that it would be amazing yeah okay let's try to see if we can do that uh-huh Okay, and eventually, so uh, I will go through uh, again the, the whole organization and see eventually where we can stick that um, couple of hours additional, because it will be maybe one hour, two hours to fly the drones, and then one hour or two to, to get the, so it would be another half a day. Yeah, yeah, or maybe... Um... I mean, maybe I, I can do it fast, but it will take maybe but less than an hour, I mean. Yeah. Minimum, just to open the software, get the image, do, and do a couple of trials. And, and... Yeah, but that would be very useful because to to combine the GIS with real images, I think, is very powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and especially people need to understand that the GIS is, you know, anything that is G in, in, into a GIS has got a projection. So you, you cannot just take an image and, and open it into a GIS. You need to reproject that that object. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that and they will see that there might be a distortion of the. It depends how how the, the image is, but they will see that normally you will see that the image it takes a 